How is steel made? How do we produce enough heat to melt it? How do we get molten steel into a form that we can use and what is the best way of doing this? In this module, we will try to answer these questions by looking at iron ore, blast and electric arc furnaces, steel making and casting. We also reveal how many Eiffel Towers we could make in an hour from the world's steel production. Iron ore is common in the Earth's crust and contains iron chemically bonded to oxygen. It is mined in areas such as the Americas and Australia. The mining involves using explosives to break up rock. This is then crushed and the iron ore separated from non-metals. Iron ores from different locations are blended together. This is combined with coke and heated to make an iron-rich feedstock for the blast furnace called sinter. Sinter is added to the blast furnace along with coke and lime and a continuous hot air blast is injected through nozzles called tuyers in the base of the furnace. This air blast from which the process gets its name helps raise the temperature of the furnace to 2200 degrees Celsius or 4000 degrees Fahrenheit. This is high enough to cause the chemical reduction of the iron oxide from the sinter. Carbon added as coke and oxygen from the hot air blast into molten iron and carbon dioxide. The lime forms with the impurities to form a liquid called slag, which floats on the iron. The liquid iron collects in the bottom of the blast furnace, where it is drawn off, and the slag is skimmed off and used in other industries, like cement manufacture. Making iron in a blast furnace is a continuous process, and they often run for many years at a time. The metallic iron produced in a blast furnace contains substantial amounts of impurities such as sulfur, phosphorus and silicon. These impurities make the iron virtually useless without further processing. Basic oxygen steel making is the main batch production process for refining iron from the blast furnace into steel and accounts for approximately 1,200 megatons per year. This is enough steel to make nearly 19 Eiffel Towers every hour. In the basic oxygen steel making process, 300 to 350 tons of iron can be converted into steel in approximately 30 minutes. First, scrap steel is put into the vessel, then the molten iron is added. A lance blows high purity oxygen onto the iron at approximately twice the speed of sound. This causes the rapid oxidation of carbon, manganese and silicon in the charge. These reactions, which give off heat, help to melt the scrap and aid in the refining process. The impurities in the metal are removed by oxidation and interaction with the slag. The steel is then processed further in secondary steel making. Before we look at secondary steel making, another process for producing steel is the electric arc furnace. The electric arc furnace accounts for the majority of the remaining steel production and produces around 400 megatons per year worldwide. That's the equivalent of melting down one Titanic every hour. In comparison with basic oxygen steel making, the electric arc furnace has the advantage of being able to start with a solid charge, as it does not use iron from the blast furnace, but uses cold steel scrap making it one of the world's largest recycling processes. The electric arc furnace makes a steel batch up to 150 tons in under one hour, and the process permits extremely close control over temperature, composition and refining conditions for each heat, making it particularly useful for speciality steels like stainless steel. The furnace is filled with steel scrap. The furnace lid is swung into place, and three graphite electrodes are lowered into the furnace. A powerful electric current is passed through the electrodes, creating an arc. The arc reaches temperatures of about 12,000 degrees Celsius or 21,500 degrees Fahrenheit. This is twice the temperature of the surface of the sun, and consequently, the heat generated melts the steel scrap. Once the first load of scrap is melted, a further one or two loads of scrap are added. Lime and floor spar, a type of flux, are added, and oxygen is usually blown into the melt, causing impurities in the metal to combine and form a slag. 
The steel is monitored for composition and temperature and then the steel is drawn off into a ladle and sent for secondary steel making. After basic oxygen steel making or the electric arc furnace, secondary steel making is used to further refine the steel. In secondary steel making, fine additions of alloys are made to meet the customer specification. Temperature is controlled and gases such as oxygen are removed through the addition of aluminium and silicon. The process also reduces impurities such as sulfur and phosphorus through slags that will be built up in the ladle. This slag also retains heat in the ladle and isolates the molten metal from the air. Following steel making, casting is required to solidify the molten steel ready for shaping or forming into a suitable profile. The three main ways of doing this are sand casting, continuous casting and ingot casting. Sand casting Sand casting is a process for making a part by pouring molten metal into a mould, having a cavity of the desired shape and then allowing it to solidify. In sand casting, sand mixed with water and suitable binders is the moulding material. The moulding material is packed around a pattern often made of wood. This pattern is slightly larger than the finished part due to the contraction of the metal on solidification and cooling. When the pattern is removed from the moulding material, a cavity having the same shape as the pattern remains. The sand must be packed or rammed to the correct degree to avoid air or water vapour being trapped in the molten metal, causing unsoundness. The cavity is usually created in two or more sections that are then fitted together to create a mould. The mould will have one or multiple holes in which to pour the molten metal. There will be channels to direct the molten metal and there will also be a reservoir next to the cavity so that when the molten metal in the cavity solidifies and consequently shrinks, any voids will be immediately filled with more molten metal from this reservoir. Metal of the desired composition is heated well above its melting point in order to ensure good fluidity. If this is not done, the molten metal may solidify in the mould and consequently be unable to completely fill up. Many casting grades of steel have higher levels of silicon as this helps to increase the fluidity of the molten metal. After the metal has solidified, the finished casting can be shaken or knocked out of the mould, which can only be used once. The advantages of sand castings include low cost, high flexibility, virtually any sized casting can be produced and it is a simple, expedient way to make a wide range of products. Continuous casting Usually, continuous casting uses feedstock from the basic oxygen steel process. A ladle of steel is teamed or poured through a gas-type refractory nozzle into a tongue dish with special weirs and dams to aid in the removal of impurities. This tongue dish is a reservoir and it feeds the steel through further gas-tight nozzles into a number of water-cooled copper moulds. The cooling is controlled and only the outer skin of the steel is solidified. The moulds are oscillated to ensure that the solidifying shell does not stick and break. Flux is also added to aid lubrication. The steel shell grows as it is drawn down through a curved arrangement of support rolls and water sprays. It then emerges horizontally as solid steel strands and is cut to length with automatic gas burners. Depending on the size, these solid strands are called billets, blooms or slabs. The billet, blooms and slabs are normally processed through a rolling mill where the cast structure is refined. Initial setup of a continuous caster is expensive, but it is a very efficient process has an excellent throughput and has yield benefits over other types of casting. Ingot casting Ingot casting is primarily used with the electric arc furnace and as with continuous casting, it is an intermediate process to solidify steel to enable further shaping primarily in a forge or rolling mill. 
It is a process where molten steel is poured into a cast iron ingot mold, often cylindrical in shape. The finished ingots can weigh anything from a few kilos to hundreds of tons. The main ways of casting these ingots are either uphill teaming or vacuum casting. Ingots that are uphill teamed use a ladle either directly or in a teaming car that is positioned over a feeder system to enable the ingots to be filled from the bottom of the mold. The ladle is positioned over a funnel called a trumpet. It is opened and the metal stream established. The pouring rate is controlled throughout this teaming process. Powders which have an exothermic reaction are often added to the top of the ingot following teaming to generate heat to aid in the feeding of the ingot. Minimizing voids called pipe, insulating material is also added to aid in this. For ingots that are vacuum cast, the mold is placed in a vacuum tank and an intermediate ladle is positioned on top. The ladle that is on the vacuum tank is filled with molten metal and the tank's pressure is pumped down to create a vacuum. Pouring of the ingot is started and the intermediate ladle is fed with additional molten metal if required. The ingot is filled, the pressure vented and the same exothermic and insulating powders are added to reduce voids in the ingot called pipe. Although these powders are added, some porosity and vacancies will form within the material due to shrinkage and gases liberated from the operation. A large feeding pipe defect is cut from the ingot, but most porosity in the ingot is acceptable since it will disappear through further processing in the rolling mills or forge. In both continuous and ingot casting, the metal solidifies from the outside, progressing towards the center and thus the ingot's grain structure develops as columnar and points in the direction of solidification. This grain structure development is typical of cast materials. Hot rolling or forging will break up the cast structure and form a smaller, more uniform wrought grain structure. Ingot casting is better suited to one-offs and small batches. It is also able to produce large ingots easily and is the least complicated of the casting techniques. So in summary, the majority of steel is processed through the blast furnace, basic oxygen steel making, secondary steel making and continuous cast process. The electric arc furnace is more versatile for small batches and is very well suited to speciality steels like stainless steels. Secondary steel making refines the steel and controls parameters to meet the customer specification. The advantages of sand casting include low cost, high flexibility, virtually any size casting can be produced and it is a simple expedient way to make a wide range of products. Ingot casting is used primarily with the electric arc furnace and is best suited for one-offs and small batches. It is also able to produce large ingots easily and is the least complicated of the casting techniques. Continuous cast and ingot cast materials are further worked in a rolling mill or forge to refine the structure, whereas sand castings are not.